Hi, and welcome to this episode of NOV Live. I'm Michael Gaines, the voice at NOV and host of the podcast NOV Today. Glad you are with us today. Uh, we are going to be having a, a really good conversation today talking about some digital tools and how those uh, apply in the uh, oil field and uh, specifically in a drilling application. So uh, today's uh, guest is going to be uh, Christopher Jeffrey, who is the product line uh, director for Digital Well Site. So uh, we'll be getting to Chris in just one moment. Uh, with me, as always, of course, is uh, NOV's social media manager, Shelby Domain. So Shelby, hey, good to see you. Good to see you too, Michael. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So for those that aren't familiar with uh, NOV Live and haven't been part of the broadcast, can you give us a quick rundown as to uh, how it goes and what they can expect? Absolutely. Uh, so like always, I think I've said this once, I'll say it a million times. I love this platform. It gives us a chance to engage with uh, you, the audience watching from work or home. Uh, so at any point throughout the show, if you have a question for our guest or want to write in for any of our segments, please use the comment section. If you're watching from LinkedIn, Facebook, or YouTube, go ahead. Uh, we are watching the comments and we'll get to as many of them and as many of the questions as we can throughout the show. Uh, speaking of comments, that leads us right into our first segment of the show. We are going to go to our Rig Geek Post of the Week. Rig Geek's Post of the Week. All right, so if you didn't see this segment last week, uh, Rig Geek Post of the Week is when we're going to show an image here in just a moment and ask a fun trivia question uh, for all of our Rig Geeks out there. If you think you know the answer, go ahead and put that in the comment section. And at the end of the show, we're actually gonna reveal the answers to you. So now we're gonna pull that image up on the screen. And this week's Rig Geek question is, can you name the system uh, featured in each of these images? So A, B, C, and D, can you name all four of the systems that we have shown? Um, uh, and then at the end of the show, we're going to reveal that. So go ahead and put those in the comments. Again, Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube. Go ahead, comment that in. And um, we'll see at the end of the show if uh, who guessed it right. All right. Looks good. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to seeing some of those uh, guesses come up. All right. Well, uh, as we mentioned at the top of the program, uh, we are going to be talking about uh, some technologies and applications that really help uh, in uh, the world of drilling and specifically uh, looking at automation and other uh, technology uh, solutions. So to help talk about that and, and specifically around uh, uh, the, the space of using intelligent applications as well and, and AI. So to talk about that, I have uh, Christopher Jeffrey, who is the product line director for Digital Well Site. So hey, Christopher, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on, Michael. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, maybe to start out, so we're, we're talking about uh, a Kaizen, which is a, a intelligent uh, a drilling application, an optimization application. But maybe I should take a step back. So you know, for someone that says, "Okay, I kind of hear that," but but what what is that? Is there an analogy maybe that you use as a start? uh as or people get used as a an example for for what what kaizen really is yeah that's a great question and actually i prepared one of these for our, our upper management team so when you buy a car you can get cruise control um cruise control is sort of like your auto driller on a rig you put in a value say i want to go 70 miles an hour and your car will try and go 70 miles an hour no matter what the conditions are and what changes are happening around you. Kaizen is an intelligent adaptive auto driller. Um, so it's sort of like an intelligent cruise control. Uh, takes in information like the conditions of the environment around you. So in the car analogy, if it started raining, Kaizen would say, it's not safe to drive 70 miles an hour anymore. Let's go 50 miles because that's the safe speed to do taking in things if the road conditions train from a nice concrete road to a gravel road as uh, the condition change due to road work, it would sense the change in the, that. And again, might say, actually, now it's only safe to go 30 miles an hour. And as you change back onto that nice road, 
Kaizen would increase your speed, getting you to your destination as safely as possible in the minimum amount of time. Mm, okay. All right. So that and that that's really helpful in, in kind of visualizing it, or at least mentally for me. And I know folks appreciate that. Um, so, uh, you know, as, as a product line director, I know that uh, part of, of your approach is, is obviously looking at the, the, the totality of the solution and application. So can you kind of help us understand a little bit, you know, how did we get to the point of where we, we actually have, have Kaizen now? What kind of precipitated that uh, the development? There's been a you know, huge focus within the industry on digitization and how do we use data. Um, we hear comments and see comments in the media of data is the new oil and everyone is really focused on generating value with their data. And actually working with clients, what we found is they're overwhelmed by the volume of data that's being produced. So that's where products like Kaizen come into the mix, where we take a lot of the human dependence away and use machine learning and artificial intelligence to process these huge volumes of data at the rig site in real time to make the decisions for the driller. And that's where that in adaptive and intelligent part comes into it. Okay, um, so when you're looking at uh, at that, what are what are some of the the key items that that you've ex that you've maybe experienced kind of in in your uh, kind of in your background in terms of being in the field that now you can you see that Kaizen can can help uh, provide for for those that are looking for this particular type of, of solution. Yeah, we've seen in the past, you know, a drilling engineer would do a lot of analysis up front. And you know they'll specify parameters, say run 60 RPM and 40,000 pounds weight on bit. And we saw a lot of set it and forget it type behavior from drillers. They wanted to follow the instructions, so they just followed those instructions to the letter. That evolved over time and people started finding ranges, but we still didn't find there was a lot of drillers who felt confident in continuously making changes to the parameters to try and drive that performance. Um, operators like Exxon put in place processes like their fast drill process to try and educate and drive that responsive behavior. Um, and that led to a product uh, that Exxon released called DAS. Um, we looked at that product and we looked at the options around it and we've opted to develop Kaizen. And Kaizen adds a lot of functionality to the platforms and to the ways that these things are working by adding uh, physics-based modeling to help the artificial intelligence drive those changes in real time. So, um, and, and for those, I know there are some that just joined us on LinkedIn. We're talking to Christopher Jeffrey, who is the product line director for uh, the Digital Well site. And we're talking about uh, artificial intelligence and specifically Kaizen, which is a, a new product from uh, the NOV uh, MD Totco. Uh, business uh, unit. So, uh, Chris, I wanted to to ask you kind of one of those questions that uh, you know gets gets asked a lot, especially when you start talking about uh, artificial intelligence. So there, are, so this is a, a system that that really is designed intentionally to help the driller. It's not necessarily uh, you know the 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 kind of the far future of you know it's just doing it by itself. It's it's really a, a, an enabling tool. Yeah, this is a you know enabling tool, and you know we look at it. Once you get the bit back on bottom, it takes over making those parameter changes to improve performance, which removes distractions from the driller, so he can really concentrate on efficiently running the rig crew, running the equipment, being aware of well control situations, uh, managing his alarms and the processes better. So instead of having to worry about the optimization piece of the drilling, we take that load off them and we move that to the artificial intelligence, which I think just makes them a better driller and really allows them to concentrate on the critical things, especially in HSE of keeping the rig crew safe and keeping the well under control. Okay. And uh, so I know part of our, our broadcast, I, I wasn't able to mention at the top of the show, but um, I think we have uh, Andrew Cregan uh, with us, who is uh, also part of the Kaizen uh, uh, product uh, offering. Uh, Andrew is uh, what I, I like to call our 
Kai's an expert. So, uh, Andrew, good to see you. Thanks for, for jumping in here with us. All right. We're going to get Andrew up here in just a second. Might have a little bit of a uh, challenge on the audio, but uh, wanted to uh, ask, I mean, I can ask you, uh, Chris, so for uh, for this this uh, Kaizen uh, technology and, uh, and approach, as, as you look at uh, where this this can be applied, what are some of the the areas that I think you you get most excited about, or, or maybe even more so, uh, feedback that you're hearing that uh, that folks are are looking to really uh, gain the most value out of it? Yeah, I think Kaizen is one of those great products that's applicable to a lot of drilling applications and a lot of situations. We're really seeing you know, benefits to the clients. We did a lot of work in the Northeast in the Marcellus a shale area with a client where they saw great benefits, uh, about a 9% uh, reduction in well cost. And really it's just those applications where you know, you're employing people in remote centers, you're taking a lot of effort to try and manage your parameters and being on top of that in real time, making changes, that's a lot of effort for humans to stay focused and to make the right decisions and to be consistent. Uh, one of the things that Kaizen has is we have the tagline, smarter every foot drilled. So as Kaizen continuously drills, it's actually learning as it drills and adds that to its memory. So the more wells you actually drill with Kaizen on the rig, the better the database becomes for it to actually use its artificial intelligence on. And that's a real standout feature that we're not limited to a short time frame of learnings. We can take in a lot of learnings from previous wells. And we even have the ability to pre-train the model mm. to intake your offset well data, use that to train Kaizen even before we deploy it to the rig. Wow, that's that's really interesting. So I can go into to uh, or yeah, like you said, if I've got an offset well, I can go ahead and not only take that information, um, but like you said, that can be loaded into Kaizen, so that it, it sounds effectively like you're able to then replicate some of the, either the the best practices or known approaches, you know, depending on uh, the formations and and lithologies and so forth. Is, is that right? Yeah, that's really the benefit. There is you can pre learn. And that gives it that database to reference when it's making decisions. Um, it's not necessary for the operation of Kaizen, but it will improve the speed at which it learns by knowing that information ahead of time. Okay, good. Um, I think Shelby uh, actually has a, a question for us uh, from uh, the comments. Hey, Shelby. Hi, yes, yeah, so this question comes from LinkedIn. And uh, Kim wants to know, how does Kaizen work with Novos? Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, Novos, uh, which is uh, the uh, reflexive drilling system that uh, NOV has. Yeah. So can you talk to that, Chris? How, how is the, the interaction between the Kaizen system and, uh, and Novos? Yeah. So that's actually a really great question. And that's how I know the answer to two of your rig geek uh, <laughs> questions. Exactly. Is, okay. Well, I don't know. We might not let you go first then. <laughs> so. Uh, there are two of those systems. One I am the product line director for, and the other one is uh, heavily used by Kaizen. So yeah, we work with Novos really closely. We have a Novos app. Um, so you actually can control the set points and the tuning parameters for Kaizen from the Novos interface. Um, it actually was the first rig control system we integrated with. So where Novos controls the processes for you, it will do the things like taking you from in slips, getting you back on bottom, Kaizen is really an enhancement once you're on bottom. So we provide all auto driller set points and Novos then provides those directly to the Amphion or Cyberbase rig to enable it to act on them. So that's how we actually get a full uh, control mode where we're allowing Kaizen to make those decisions and they're automatically applied to mm. the rig through Novos. Okay. No, that's good. Yeah, that's that's really interesting to hear the uh, integration between between those two because I know that was actually one of the questions I was going to ask you later. So it sounds like so, someone already beat me to the punch. So that's that's yeah. good. Uh, Shelby, I think you had had another question. Sure. Yeah, this one also came from LinkedIn. Um, we had one user wanted to know: uh, Does it hold a tool face? 
It mm. does. Okay, so d is Kaizen able to detect tool face? Is that is that right? <laughs> Can I answer this one? Oh, sorry, I, I, sorry, I cut out. So that was that was my fault. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, Kaizen currently is not a steering application. Uh, okay. Um, we are looking into that space. It's a very interesting space, uh, the automated directional drilling space area. Um, and I think it's going to be one of these watch for a uh, video like this later in the year. Yeah, sure, sure, absolutely. Well, we'll uh, we'll leave the curtain closed on that one. Um, but uh, yeah, so that that sounds good. So in in terms of you know, it, uh, actual implementation of Kaizen onto uh, a rig. Can you give give folks kind of an overview as to what 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 does that process look like? Yeah, so the first step for us is to determine the rig compatibility. Uh, as I said, we work closely with Novos. Um, so if you have a Novos enabled rig, we would be able to install Kaizen on that rig. So. Basically, the you know if you are interested in running Kaizen, we engage. You will actually probably be pushed in Andrew Cregan's direction, and he will go through the implementation process, uh, a rig assessment for compatibility. If you just want to run Kaizen in the advisory mode, where Kaizen gives the driller set points and they would implement them, all you need is a uh, rig currently running RigSense three point five, which is our current. Uh, rental version. So that's the majority of the rigs running MD Togco instrumentation in the US. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, Shelby, I think you had some more, man, those questions are rolling in. What they do you got? We are. Yeah, I, I got a great one. Um, so this one, I believe, came from LinkedIn as well. Y'all on LinkedIn are, are, are absolutely killing the, killing the question game. Um, they asked, can data from Black Box or other NWD shock inputs be linked to Kaizen? Hmm. I, I can't answer that, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let you answer <laughs> that. Yeah. That's, that's a really good question. Um, we have a implementation where we can take downhole data uh, from a black stream EMS tool. Hmm. So the downhole data, and that's with IntelliSurf wide draw pipe. Um, we're really excited, um, actually should be testing that in the field in the next 60 to 90 days, I believe. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So, I mean, it sounds like, you know, effectively out of the box, there's, uh, there's quite a bit of capability and, and, uh, uh, ability to, to jump in with Kaizen. Um, real quick for you, Chris. So when you're looking at, the actual interface. Can you talk a little bit about that? Is is everything uh, presented to the driller right there in the uh, driller's cabin, or how how, do, how are folks able to interact with that that data? Yeah, so they interact with the data on two fronts. One's going to be the control system side in a control implementation. That's normally through Novos and the majority of our installs. So they can adjust parameters there in the Novos screen. And that's actually that top right hand corner of the screen you just saw. And then we have a number of functions that are within the RigSense system for the configuration of Kaizen. And we feed information about pipe tally, drill string dimensions, which are all used by the digital twin from RigSense across to the Kaizen engine to minimize the amount of repeated work people have to do to maintain the setup. Okay. No, that sounds good. Um, got some more questions rolling in. Absolutely. Um, so we had one, they asked, can Kaizen control the whole drilling autonomously? So fully AI and control of everything. They asked uh, WOB, RPM, and GPM. So can it control everything autonomously is what they're asking. Yeah, so it's a great question. Uh, our control is focused on weight on bit, RPM, and differential pressure. So those are the three parameters we will pass the set point for the auto driller across for. So okay. I think the only one there was we don't do any flow rate. Right. But in the implementation where you're using Novos, Novos would be doing all of that control of pump ramp rates, ramping up and round, down of pumps. Okay, got it, got it. You know I'm back. That means I got another question. Sure, go right ahead. <laughs> All right. Um, so we also we had another one. They asked, "What 
do, what does Kaizen take into account for optimization? Is it instantaneous ROP, average ROP, yes, instantaneous MSE? So they're wondering, what does it take into account uh, when optimizing? Right. And so they mentioned MSE, which which I'll, I'm going to make you dust off the memory bank there. So before you jump into it, so MSE for folks that aren't familiar, Chris, what is that? So it's mechanical specific energy, and it's a way of calculating the amount of energy that was input to drill a certain amount of rock. Um, so it becomes normalized actually into a pressure as a measurement. Um, but it's a really good way of telling your general trends and your drilling efficiency. If the rock is the same and your MSE is going up, you're getting less efficient. Um, if it's going down, you're getting more efficient. And there's a lot of great papers, and it's the basis of the fast drill system from ExxonMobil. For Kaizen, we actually have continuous tuning abilities. So we have a response tuning where you can focus Kaizen's optimization either on the MSE, so looking at being more efficient with your drilling, or you can focus it on ROP, where it's trying to drill as fast as possible. And this is actually a slider between 1 and 10, which allows you to change this response tuning according to what your objectives are, maybe what the formation is like and what you've seen in the past. So if you've seen a lot of uh, damage beyond repair drill bits, um, downhole motor failures, you may want to slide Kaizen towards MSC to try and be as efficient as possible to avoid that type of damage. And maybe if you're in a formation that you don't see those sort of damages and you really just want to push it as fast as possible, you can slide it all the way up to 10 and you know, turn and burn. Mm. Okay. All right. I think this will be our, our last question, but um, got one more. Uh, so we, they were wondering, what is the biggest or main difference between Kaizen and uh, some other competitors? Yeah, great oh, question yeah. again. Yeah, um, I, I think they're rolling in. So yeah, so... Uh, I know there are a lot of great features that uh, uh, Kaizen has to offer. Yeah, so what are what are some of those that uh, that you you rest your head quite well at night uh, hanging on to, Chris? I think that if I had to pick one to really focus on is the fact that Kaizen is running a full physics based digital twin. Mm -hmm. So instead of just using the surface data to make decisions, we're running a full physics based model of the drill string in real time, running uh, at the same speed as the data that's coming in. And we're using that to determine what's going on along the drill string. We can do things like estimate the maximum weight on bit for buckling, and then use that to determine whether or not it makes sense by the AI analyzing that data from the digital twin to make its decision on parameter changes. So it's a lot more than just running some sort of search algorithm that's varying parameters to try and guess which way to go. It's got a lot more depth behind it in terms of understanding stress along your drill string and adding that to decision-making processes within the AI. Yeah, no, that sounds really good. I uh, and I, I know that we weren't able to get to all the questions for Chris. Uh, you and thanks for hanging in there, Chris. You did a, a great job with these these uh, these bullet or these fly, high flying questions. But if folks have additional questions or want to reach out to Chris or others, uh, you can find more information at nov.com forward slash kaizen. And there uh, on that page, there are some additional resources as well as a contact us button that you can use and uh, that'll go straight to our uh, team who then can wrap around with you and answer any additional questions. So I've uh, been speaking with Christopher Jeffrey, the product line director for Kaizen. So uh, thanks to Chris for joining us. Now we're going to be moving on to uh, a new part of uh, our NOV Live show, which is going to be uh, called the the Ask Assad segment. So uh, in NOV, uh, there are many people that we go for for insight uh, into business and strategy and the, and the market. And uh, one of those uh, key people is Assad Mahana, who's joining me now. So Assad is the director of business strategy here at NOV. So good to see you, Assad. Hey, Michael. So uh, I know that uh, you know if a lot of folks have have heard headlines over the last. 
really several weeks. Uh, if you've been anywhere near uh, the energy industry and have, have seen you know, headlines all over. Um, and so, you know, it can be really easy to kind of get stuck in, you know, just I, I can't see any sunshine. It's, it's just cloudy all day, every day. Um, and I know that we've talked before and, and you've, you've reminded me several times that there's, there's always an upside. So I kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit today and, and start out there. How do you, how do you view that? So you, you talk about the upside. Yes, the, 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 there's certainly an upside here. I, just going back, uh, the industry has been struggling for the last few years and uh, it's gotten a lot worse in the last couple of days. But uh, with all of that, and like we've seen in previous downturns, although this is not like any, uh, there will always be opportunities in, uh, in environments where we're challenged. Uh, I think uh, one is certainly where we've been challenged in the past is on the business model side and how we've been, uh, how, how we've been writing our contracts and how we've been uh, managing that whole supply chain. Um, we've inherited some, some business models from the 80s and until date, those business models have not changed. Um, you know, we've, we've heard today from Christopher on, on Kaizen and how that enables kind of an autonomous uh, drilling capability uh, and with automated and, and learning model. Uh, data is becoming more and more available. And with data being available and also being, becoming a better quality, uh, I think we have more tools in our hands to, uh, to make different uh, relationships be created with this environment. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, definitely looking at business models is is one key area. Um, a, another aspect that that is usually top of mind for me is uh, kind of looking at the the space of innovation when, and you know whether that's you know innovating a business model or or technical innovation. How do you how do you view that, especially in a time like this? Yeah, yeah, we've, we've uh, definitely uh, been waiting for that innovation. Will what we've seen in the past is that was the, the challenging times is when innovations first. Um, we've had some challenges in oil and gas. We've been kind of used to doing things the way we do them, just because it works. Uh, but with a lower oil price, with greater competition, with more consolidation of that space. Um, a retooling, a smarter retooling is going to have to happen and, and more space for innovation, which, which really brings me up to another topic here, Michael, and that's startups. I think our space has been dry from startup innovation and contribution. Uh, hopefully, the, this new environment that we're getting used to day by day um, opens the door for, for, for new contribution from these smaller players. Right. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good, good reminder. Um, and, it, and so, you know, we've, we've talked about the idea of, you know, some of the silver linings are, are the potential for uh, new or, or revamped business models. And then we talked about innovation, you know, inclusive of, of startups. Um, you know, another aspect that, that I think uh, is, is top of mind for, for many is the idea of, of energy transition and, and what, what that entails. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. And, you know, Michael, that's my favorite one. Yeah. Um, Energy transition, uh, while not so new, has become in the headlines for the last uh, four or five years after the Paris Agreement. But uh, what, I, what, I, what I think um, is, is key here is that there is an opportunity for oil and gas to contribute significantly in that space. I think every player, and I, I would say NOV particularly, sits very well in that space where it's all a matter of um, solving complex problems in high, harsh environments, um, where we really need to think about space, about weights, about forces from all directions, and environments that uh, that are either underwater or uh, with with uh, with high forces acting on them, whether it's uh, solar energy, wind energy, or any others. Um, as a, as an organization, NOV has been part of that space for some time. Gusto MSC, which joined, which is a company that just joined our our, uh, our organization uh, just a couple of years ago. Um, uh, participates in that space very closely and in ways that are extremely adjacent to what we do in oil and gas. Think uh, designing offshore uh, uh, vessels that install uh, fixed wind turbines offshore. Um, uh, think tri-floater technology for floating wind technology. I mean, those, those are spaces that 
are already mature, especially on the fixed wind, uh, floating is coming. Um, how do we contribute in that space? Is a skill set that's embedded in our capabilities? And I think every old company should consider part participating in that space. Right. Right. Absolutely. No, that's um, that's really good insight. Um, good. Good to know that there's still, um, you know, like I said, some some silver lining, future opportunity. Uh, you know, in in light of 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 everything. So that's that's good uh, advice. So appreciate it. Been speaking with uh, Saad Mahana, the director of business strategy here at NOV. So thanks so much to you. Um, no all right. So we are going to go ahead and pivot over to Shelby to help uh, round out uh, those that have been wondering, like they saw that picture earlier mm -hmm. and uh, give, give some answers for us for those that are waiting in the wings. Absolutely. Uh, before we give the answers, um, I'm going to show the image real quick. And this is for our Rig Geek Post of the Week segment. Um, if, if it maybe got cut off on LinkedIn, I just wanted to ask the question one more time. Uh, give, give maybe folks a few more seconds to, to put in their answers. Uh, but the question here was we showed these four photos from technology uh, past, present, and, and future as well, and asked what systems are uh, the focus of these images. So what systems do we have um, for each A, B, C, and D. And before I reveal the answers, we wanted to maybe ask Chris. I think he said he might know two of them. Yeah, he he proudly said that he he knew fifty percent of the answers there. <laughs> so, all right, Chris. So yeah, let's let's put it up again. So, uh, what you got? What you, go ahead, Shelby. I was say, what you got, Chris? And I'd be worried, so I think I would uh, probably be in trouble if I didn't know B. So <laughs> B is the RigSense system, which falls within the digital well-site portfolio of MD Tugco. And C is the Novos system, which the top right-hand corner of that graphics is actually the Kaizen interface. Okay. Absolutely. I wish I had a bell. I could ding, ding, ding. Yeah, yeah we'll work on that. Yeah, <laughs> get a little soundboard. Um, so yeah, absolutely. B is RigSense and C is Novos. Uh, so the other answers, A, that is Spectrum. Um, so that's that's a little bit of a, a throwback image there. And so is D, which is Mudwatch. So we have Spectrum, RigSense, Novos, and Mudwatch. So thank you everyone for playing uh, Rig Geeks Post of the Week. We will be sharing uh, these images and a little bit more about them and a, a couple other fun facts about them on our page uh, later, so so stick at look out for that if you if you want to learn a little bit more about each of those systems. Cool. No, that's really good. Um, all right. Well, yeah, I'm gonna have to to brush up on my history. So uh, before we leave you, Shelby, I uh, know that we're wrapping up here. Can you give us a little bit of a preview of what's coming up next week? Absolutely, would love to. So next week we're gonna have uh, two guests on the show. We're gonna have Noah Buck, who is the Business Development Manager for Intervention and Stimulation Equipment. Quite, quite the mouthful uh, here at NOV. And we're also going to have Charles Pope, who is the President of Complete Shale Consulting. And they're going to be here uh, to talk about real-time data delivery and um, different concepts around that, how you can use that to decrease risk and cost. Um, as well as some other other areas using uh, data engineering and, and how you can utilize that um, to, again, yeah, decrease that cost and increase efficiency and really connect more to the wall site. Cool. All right. Well, looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Well, thanks, Shelby. And a special thanks to Christopher Jeffrey for joining us today on this episode of NOV Live. And for those that are interested in additional information on our, our primary topic, which was Kaizen, uh, again, you can head over to NOV.com forward slash Kaizen and uh, can learn a little bit more about that and reach experts like Christopher and many others. So on behalf of everyone here at NOV, we thank you so much for joining us and uh, look forward to seeing you again next week at 11 a.m. Central Time. Uh, for the next week's show. So until then, we'll see you, there, see you later, and we hope you have a good one. Stay safe.